You're doing great and amazing things these days. While this world is in confusion, you are not, and your people are not. You've given us the spirit of, of life, of power, and of a sound mind. A love and power and of a sound mind. Thank you, Lord. That as far as what is going on, God, you shall continue to watch over us. And the glory of the Lord is rising rapidly upon us. And the remnant and the select God shall walk in obedience before you. And we shall experientially, Lord, be able to do our part in bringing multitudes that are this moment in the valley of decision, bringing them to you, to the God that saves, the God that heals, the God that delivers, and the God that restores. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen. And everyone said amen. amen. Those of you that are at home, uh, and some of you have already gathered your family, and uh, you have the bread and the wine or the grape juice, we're going to have that communion at this time. At home, and those of you that are watching the program, you can really partake with us together. This glass represents the shed blood of the Lamb of God that taketh away our sins. And Paul said that he saved him, and he was the worst of sinners. If God can save him, he can save anyone. Amen. So as we lift up the cup to the Lord, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, Sovereign, King. You are the ruler of this universe. You are the fruit of the vine. Through Yeshua HaMashiach, let us drink together. We're going to partake of the bread. We have some matzah here. That we're just going to take a small piece. And then we're going to do the blessing in Hebrew and in English. If you know it in Hebrew, join us. And everyone together, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Bori Pari Hagafin. How blessed are you, O Lord, our God, sovereign, king, majestic, ruler of this universe. You are the bread of life through Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Let us eat bread. Amen. You may have your seat. In my message tonight, I'd like to be able to somehow, with the help of the Ruach HaGodish address, the issues and the problems that uh, the world is facing today. Uh, I want to put it into perspective in such a way that you may <coughs> be able to see the hand of God, the providence of God at work. First of all, I'd, I'd like to read this uh, short little <coughs> 
testimony, you might say, <coughs> from one of our Torah students in sunny California, Dolores A. Salter. And she writes, I am in, in agreement with Rabbi because of the divine revelation of Hashem. Counsel and wisdom is sound. We are praying, fasting, and studying Torah. Acts of love towards his people has been amazing. Families and friends are coming together. Healthcare workers are amazingly compassionate. We are patiently waiting for Hashem to do his perfect will in earth as it is in heaven. Yahweh's vision for the world is and always will be peace with love prevailing. She says, no refund to me, please. I am at peace, full of hope, love, joy, and goodness in the midst of chaos and confusion. Can we also say the same thing? That we're at a peace in the midst of what? Chaos and confusion. <clears throat> okay, so this, this uh, coronavirus is now officially a global pandemic. And suddenly we find ourselves, uh, we are smitten by a plague of such magnitude that it has overwhelmed this entire earth. So I might say that it is, uh, that we've been smitten by a plague of biblical severity. And right now we are all presented, those of us that know God, we are presented with an unprecedented opportunity that we've never had before. And perhaps we may never again have. We have the attention of the world today. At least God has their attention. And it seems to me that when Hashem, our God, who inspired the psalmist to write Psalms 53 too. And God looked down. And when he looked down from heaven, he looked upon the children of men. He looked down to see if there were any that did understand and they, that did seek God. So I would ask the question, are we understanding what's going on? Are we seeking God? I pray we are. And the 10 plagues of Egypt, they're also known as the 10 diseases, the plagues of Egypt or the biblical plagues that are described in Exodus chapter 7 and 12 through 12, the diseases were 10 that were sent upon this global power of that day. It was sent by God for the purpose of convincing Pharaoh to free his people from oppression, the oppression they had endured for 400 years. Think about that. Perhaps you are under oppression. You're under pressure, but not for 400 years. But they endured it for 400 years. And when, when God, Hashem our God, raised, he raised an imperfect man by the name of Moses. It was to deliver his people that are called by his name and deliver them from the cruel bondage in a land that was filled with false gods. Like many lands today are filled with false gods. Just drive down your city and you'll see false gods and false religions and cults of every name. And we, when he saw this, he promised to show his wonders. 
as confirmation to Moses that he had now God-given authority. I want you to know that we serve the same God of Moses. There are plagues in the world today. There are clouds of darkness. And this confirmation for Moses was to serve at least two purposes. One, to show his chosen people, the Jews, and to show all who walk in righteousness that the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob was uh, indeed, he was alive, he's alive, and worthy of their and our worship. And also to show the Egyptians, as we must also show the world today, that their gods were nothing. That the God of Israel will always have the final authoritative word. As supreme ruler of the people, the Pharaoh or Pharaoh who represents Hasatan's effort to destroy God's people, he was considered himself a god. The intermediary between, he was considered uh, the interme intermediary between the gods and the people. In the big picture of the liberation of God's people in Egypt is that their first, first had to be 10 plagues before they could be delivered. 10 diseases. The global powers of that day had to experience. The elite of that day had to experience. The elite corrupted fake media of that day also had to experience before God's people would walk away free from the slavery and the claims of Pharaoh. Are you listening tonight? Because this same God is about to set free those that are righteous and pure before him. And when Pharaoh came to the throne, he was instantly associated with Horus, that is the God who had defeated the forces of chaos. There's chaos in this world today. Where is that God? But here he is. <coughs> Horus, the God who had defeated the forces of chaos and supposedly restored order. And when that di God died, then there was another God by the name of Osiris, the God of the dead. In the biblical new year, listen, there's a biblical new year for the year 2020, and that year is going to begin next Thursday on March 26, 2020, which is Nisan, one on the Jewish calendar. So guess what? The Jewish people are going to have their new year according to the dictates of God to Moses. And he told Moses, this will be the beginning of years. This will be the new year for, your, for the people of God. Nisan 1, next Thursday, March 26. Heads of states including the United States of America and including the United Nations are so focused on COVID-19 that they have no idea whatsoever what could be the meaning of any virus. And what could be the meaning of any virus is actually God's way of forcing leaders of nations, presidents, kings, princes and queens, and also the billions of inhabitants all around the world, forcing them into a forced time out. Everyone has a time out now. Hawaii has a time out. California up to New York has a time out. Europe has a time out. 
South America has a timeout. Every single nation in the world has been called for timeout. Time out for divine guidance. For those that would hear, he who has an ear, let him hear for divine guidance for the Jews as well as for the engrafted seed. Divine guidance really for anyone that would listen to the voice of God. I almost could hear God says, I, I will put the world on time out. So what could be the meaning of a virus forcing literally millions into a timeout? A timeout of quarantine, a timeout of seclusion, a timeout of social distancing other than and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who is in all, he is in all, this is the providence of God at work because he is in all and through all. And he is calling for global repentance. First, he's calling for the repentance of the lukewarm, the ice-cold people of God. He's calling for repentance of the lukewarm, ice-cold married couples that are still fighting and at each other's throat as if they have welcomed the spirit and the, and the cloud of darkness over their homes. If we're going to be presented, and I believe we are being presented with an unprecedented opportunity to impact our world for the coming of our Messiah, our Mashiach. The question then would be, are we going to be thinking almost exclusively about myself, ourself, or are we going to be thinking about someone else? We have had too much of people thinking about themselves and robbing others to gain for themselves. And one of the big things in this hour, folks, is the integrity of every believer. Are we going to trade in our integrity for our survival? For that is exactly what is going on in the world around us. The elite media is trading in their integrity for, as the President Trump put it today, for splash news. And how sad it is that the people who care only for themselves have, have actually stooped down to the level of trading their integrity for a few rolls of toilet paper and, uh, and hand sanitizers. You see, folks, we who are the people of God, we must stop and we must do a spiritual checkup on our faith. Are we at this hour thinking more about ourselves? This has got to be a spiritual checkup. Or are we thinking about our neighbor more than we're thinking about ourselves and those who are in quarantine, those that are in isolation? And folks, and what about the elderly and those who are sick? Those who are, th are we thinking of them? Have we forgotten that God has said he shall supply all of our needs. That means medical needs, uh, food needs, health needs, whatever needs we might have. God says, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. And perhaps the truth is that we are thinking more about our survival than we are thinking about someone else's survival. When God says, I want to supply your survival needs, 
But did not God tell his people that are called by his name in Deuteronomy 7, 15? The Lord will not lay upon you any of the terrible diseases you knew or had seen in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all who hate you. You see, we know that there's a lot of people that don't like or even hate the righteous. You see, the plagues aren't for you because you're righteous. The plagues, according to God's word, are for those who hate you, those who hate Israel, those who hate the Jewish people, those who hate Christians. In Goshen, where the, is where the Isra Israelites lived, there was not one single person, one righteous person that we are reading about in the word of God, listen, that began hoarding supplies. No. There was not one single Israelite that we read about in the word of the Lord that was afflicted with the, with the diseases that God put upon the Egyptians. The 10 plagues, listen, the 10 plagues the Egyptians suffered presented, listen, an opportunity for total deliverance. The plagues presented an opportunity for what? Total 100% deliverance of God's people. There's a plague in this world and it is presenting for us an opportunity of being totally and completely delivered and the power and the might and the clutch of the enemy. And I want to propose tonight that the coronavirus presents us with that unprecedented opportunity to be used by God. But then there was that sixth plague. That sixth plague, it was boils. This was a judgment against false gods in the land. Do and are there false gods in your land? You that are watching from other lands. There are false gods everywhere around the world. And that sixth plague was a judgment against these false gods and, and judgment also over health and diseases. These gods of Egypt Sekhmet, Sunu, and Isis. This time, the Bible says that the magicians could not stand before the man of God. Moses, because they were afflicted with boils. Just think about this. Why are we separated? Only because the governor put a degree that we cannot sit so close together. But in effect, if you look at the world around us at this very moment, we see something very similar. The magicians could not stand before Moses. There had to be a distance from Moses because of the boils. Because of the coronavirus, we must stay distance from someone else that may have that virus. We don't know if they're carrying it or not. But this much I know very clearly. These religious leaders of Egypt and their magicians were literally powerless. They had no cure. They had no vaccine. They were powerless. Why? Because they were coming against the God of Israel. Before God sent the last three plagues, Pharaoh was given a special message. And this is what I would say to leaders of, of nations today. God is also sending a very special, special and important message to you. Listen, 
You've experienced the plague, the, corona, the, the coronavirus plague. And it's killing hundreds of people. And it's infected tens of thousands around the world. Potential death is on the horizon. But you see, God is a God of mercy. And here he's going to give Pharaoh an opportunity to change while the disease is in place. These plagues would be more severe than the others, and they were designed to convince Pharaoh, as I believe that this plague was designed to convince the Pharaohs of our world today. Those dictators, those monsters, those that are filled with greed for money and more money, those that are using and abusing children and women, these are the pharaohs of our day. We need to listen to the voice of God because these plagues that were coming were going to be much more severe than all the previous plagues or diseases but they were designed now to finally bend the will of Pharaoh and all of all the people, Exodus 9, 14. Pharaoh and all the people had to know that there is none like me in all the earth, saith the Lord. As, it, as an example, you see, God's grace was, was when God warned Pharaoh, like he has warned world leaders today, especially in the UN. May I mention that again? Especially in the UN that has for years selected and chosen Israel for condemnation. And God tells Pharaoh to gather, listen, he tells him, I'm going to give an opportunity so that the remaining plagues that are worse than ever will not come against you. <clears throat> so he tells Pharaoh to gather whatever cattle and, and crops remain from the previous plagues and shelter them from the coming, the coming storm. Folks, there is a pending coming storm that will make this particular storm seemed like nothing. The coming storm. And don't you think that the same God who warned Pharaoh is today warning world leaders, warning pastors, warning people everywhere that if they do not change their ways and seek God and repent from their wicked ways, especially when it comes to Israel, that a dark storm will come. Folks, it's almost like a dark storm is coming. And God is giving Pharaoh, God is giving the world leaders of our day an opportunity to stop that storm. Are you listening tonight? <clears throat> you see, some of Pharaoh's um, servants, they actually heeded to that warning. It's found in Exodus 9.20. Whoever among the Pharaoh's servants feared what Adonai had, had said had his slaves and livestock escape into the houses. So some of them actually escaped. Why? Because it says that they began to fear what God had said. <clears throat> Is the world leaders today fearing something? I don't think they're fearing God. They're fearing more this disease than they're fearing the Lord God. And the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. <clears throat> Again, the fear of the Lord will be the beginning of your wisdom. Wisdom. 
Before God brought the next plague, he told Moses, he said that the Israelites would be able to, to tell their children of the things that they had seen God do in Egypt and how it showed them God's power. Did you hear that? That God now is going to use that God now can possibly, yes, use the corona virus. That he would use the coronavirus to be able for us to tell our children about the power of God to stop the virus. Or the power of God so strong that he would destroy the wicked. And then the ninth, ninth plague, or the ninth disease, you might say, was darkness. It was aimed at the sun god, Re, R-E, who was uh, symbolized by Pharaoh himself, who represents the deep, dark swamp. For three days of complete darkness, it stretched over all the land of Egypt and not over the Hebrews. Would you say amen to that? It spread all over the land of Egypt, but it did not spread over the people of God who enjoyed the light by day while the world itself was in darkness. It was so dark that the Egyptians could not see each other. Did you hear that? Did you notice how the recent Democratic contenders for the presidency were so, so divisive among themselves that they were unable to see eye to eye? Why? Because there was too much darkness between them just like it was with the Egyptians. They could not see the eyes of each other because it was gross darkness. The political system that is corrupted today is filled with gross darkness and the politicians cannot see eye to eye. So help me God. It was so dark. They could not see each other. And this is the spirit of the god of deep darkness, the sun god of Re, R-E, who operates on the political elite. The spirit of same spirit of darkness, Re, is the spirit that consumes the lives of, of ministers and Christians. With the power of Satan, if he could deceive, if possible, the very elect, how does he deceive the very elect? They succumb and they give themselves over to darkness. How do you give yourself over to darkness? Negativity. Ex ex instead of accentuating the positive and the good, they look for the dark, they look for the negative. And so many believers gravitate towards that darkness that, that was seen over Egypt. The spirit of the God of the deep darkness, the sun god Re, who operates in the political arena, the political elite, who work in that deep swamp. Listen, finally comes the, the last plague, the last disease the death of the first male, the firstborn. This was a judgment on the Egyptian god Isis. Supposedly that god is supposed to be protector of, of the children. And in this plague, God was teaching the Israelites a very deep spiritual lesson. And what was that lesson? That lesson pointed to Yeshua the Messiah. 
How did it point to Yeshua the Messiah? Unlike the other plagues which the Israelites survived by virtue of their identity, this particular plague required for the people of God to act, an act of faith had to be seen in them by God. God commanded each family to take an unblemished male lamb and kill it. The blood of the lamb was to be smeared on the door, on, on top of the top and sides of the doorways, and the lamb was to be roasted and eaten that night. And any family that did not follow God's instruction would suffer the last plague. God described how he would send the death angel through the land of Egypt with orders to slay the firstborn male in every household, whether human or animal. The only protection was what? The, the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And when the angel saw the blood, listen, and he saw the blood, Exodus 12, 23. He would pass over that house and he would leave that house untouched. God is going to pass over your house and leave your house untouched. That dark cloud, the cloud of death, cannot touch you. Would you give him praise and thanksgiving for that? It cannot touch you. And by the time the Israelites left Egypt, they had a very clear picture of God's power. Oh my, God's protection and God's plan for them. For those who were willing to believe, they had convincing evidence that they served the true and living God. And sadly, though, many still fail to believe. And I close tonight by asking this question. I ask you in, in this day and in this hour, when the entire planet has been called for time out, from all of the distractions that you may hear so that you may hear the voice of the Lord. That's why the time out is here. It's not the time for you to hoard whatever you want because he's already going to take care of you. Not the time to think I'm going to die because he's going to fly right over you. But it is the time of Exodus 15:26. If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and if you do all that is right in his eyes, and if you pay attention to his word, his commands, and keep all of his statutes, then I will not bring on you any of these diseases that I inflicted on the Egyptians. Why? For I am the Lord who heals you. He's the Lord who heals you. And if indeed he is the Lord that heals you, then you will see the most awesome deliverance you have ever seen taking place through your life. Let us stand and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Abba Father, I thank you for your word. You sent forth your word, and your word heals. I pray, Father, heal broken homes, broken lives, broken relationships. I pray for healing of nations. I pray for an uninterrupted convicting power of God upon every head of state, every ruler, every king, every queen, every president, every prime minister, every prince, our princess, all who are in authority over man, that this very night 
either in the nighttime hours or in the daytime hours, there will be an opportunity for repentance. Stop them right there in their tracks, in their homes, where billions of people are in time out. Come into those homes by the person of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaGodesh, and begin the convicting work that the Holy Spirit was sent was sent to do and touch fathers, touch mothers, touch leaders, school teachers, professors in the colleges, in the universities, that by and large, God, they don't know you. They don't believe in the creation the creationist message that you created the heavens and the earth. This is the most momentous moment, God, for your Holy Spirit to do the greatest work ever since the beginning to this very moment. Let not one person escape. Make your voice loud and clear and send God ministering angels of salvation to release them from captivity and send God revival in the kahal, in the congregations, in the churches. Awaken congregations and pastors that have been laying back let the God, the true God of Israel, rise and shine upon their lives. And I pray for Israel. Let your mighty hand reach out, even as Michael the angel will protect that land from the enemies that have come against them for centuries. Today, do a brand new work. The work that you promised Abraham, the work that you promised Moses, the work that you promised all the children of Israel, that you will not allow those plagues, those diseases to come upon your people. Now, Lord, raise among us right here from the ends of the earth, the most powerful, God-filled, God-centered ministry filled with the power of the Ruach HaGodesh, the power of God, that we may continue to build this worldwide infrastructure until we hear the sound of the Messiah, the shout And that we might hear the great shofar. So that we will be able to accomplish our mission here on earth. And then we shall be with the Lord forevermore. In Yeshua's mighty name, I pray believing. With those that have joined, praying believing. Amen and amen. <laughs>